Okay, so now that the meeting is now being recorded, hello and good afternoon everyone. So welcome again to Principles of Reinforced Concrete. And in today's meeting, we would just be having an example for the design of singly reinforced beams. And with that guys, like what I have posted yesterday, you should have already watched the introduction or uh, the latest pre-recorded video lecture that I have posted. So dapat napanood nyo na siya before kayo mag-proceed dito. Anyway, so, ayun, in this problem, so confirmation, guys, do you see, uh, do you see, uh, laser pointer, sorry, so, meron ba, guys? Meron, sir. Okay, very good. Okay, so, in this example, guys, so, example, from the problem solved using simplified method, design the interior beam limited to beam section of 300 mm, by 500 mm. So we would be using F prime C or F C prime of 28 megapascals and F Y of 420 megapascals. So the diameter of the shear reinforcement is to be 10 mm. So last month, I mean, I think three weeks ago, so nakalimutan ko na. So we have already solved for the required strength of this particular beam. So in this beam, we have used simplified method for us to know the magnitudes of the moment here. Then in this case, guys, we would be designing the uh, interior beam of this continuous beam. So that means that we will be designing this particular area. So I project ko siya dito para mas makita siya, no? So once again, from that um, video lecture, I mean from that meeting, we have identified its moments such as the moment of the midspan, I mean at the midspan, the negative moment at F, or this is to be at the right side, and the negative moment at D, and this is to be at the left side. Okay, and it is to be like this. So guys, disclaimer, this is not drawn into scale, but it kind of looks like this in actuality. Okay, so ito. So na solve na natin to dati, once again using simplified method. And the magnitude here is to be negative, ang sabi dito, negative 216. So negative 216.27 kilonewton meter. And as for the one in the right, the, this is to be 169.5025 kilonewton meter. And as for the positive moment at midspan, this is to be equal to 145.0286 kilonewton meter. So once again, guys, we have already solved this. Um, a couple of pre-recorded video lectures, I mean, a couple of meetings ago. So ito yung sa simplified method. Okay, so if this is to be the moment diagram of your beam, its, tag dito, its deflection would now be looking like this. Teka, ibang color tayo. So magiging ganito yung deflection niya. So bababa siyang ganito, then tataas siyang ganito. Oops, sorry. Teka. Dito na lang muna. So, it would now be looking like this. So, this is to be um, its deflection. So, magiging ganyan siya. So, this is to be an exaggerated figure. Basta ganyan yan. Since, um, teka, i-drawing natin dito. Mas malaki. So, eto siya. Bababa siyang ganito. Babalik siya. Then, ganyan. So, this is to be its manner of bending. And if this is to be the manner of bending, as you can see, guys, that the portion here at the midspan... I mean, at yes, at the bottom part of the midspan is to be um, stretching. And if it is stretching, it is now subjected with tensile stress. So, naka-tension itong baba and naka-compression itong taas. And as for its um, ends, so ito yung isang end natin, it, I mean, we can say that the, I mean, the upper portion here or the upper fibers here are to be in tensile stress and the lower portion here are under compressive stress as well as for the other end. So, dito din, tension siya dito, compression siya dito. So, that is because that we have a negative moment here and negative moment here. So, guys, can you follow kung bakit ganito yung behavior ng beam natin? By the way, guys, dito pala sa part na to, this is to be a fixed Fixed support yan, kaya meron niyang moment capacity. So guys, confirmation, do you follow? Uh, Miss Trinidad, do you follow? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. How about for the others, Miss Baklili? Sunod? Sunod po. Okay, very good. How about Charles? Kasunod? Yes, sir. 
Okay, very good. Okay, so with this taken into consideration, so in this manner of bending, we can safely assume that it is logical for us to place our reinforcing steel bars here at the upper part, don sa left side. And as for its mid span, it is logical for us to place the rebars at the bottom part. And for the right end, I mean, what once again, it is logical for us to place the rebars at the top part once again. So basically, this is to be the setup of our, our rebars in our reinforcing steel bars. I mean, in our singly reinforced beams, I should say. So anyway, so ngayon, i-design na natin siya. So how can we design our um, beams once again? So we have already discussed about the um, steps that we will be making use. So these are to be the steps. So the first step is for us to assume a trial section. And this step right here is already done. I mean, was already done. No? So yung gumawa ng problem, which is ako, nag-assume na agad tayo. So we will be assuming a section of 300mm by 500mm. But if it is not given, of course, it would be up to you. As long as you would be referring to this as your minimum. So ito yung mga minimum depths natin. No? So um, if it is to be simply supported, it is to be L over 16. And if it is to be continuous, that is to be L over 21. And since as you can see here, guys, so um, tawag dito? as you can see that this is to be a continuous beam, our minimum depth is to be equal to, so depth or H, so H should be greater than or equal to L divided by 21. And a previous um, video ago or previous meetings ago, we have learned there that the L or yung LN natin sa mid-span is to be 7 meters. So with that guys, so if that is now to be equal to 7 meters, so substituting known values, so our H should be greater than or equal to 7 meters divided by 21. So with that guys, looking at the calculator to your left, that is to be 7 divided by 21 and that is to be 0 0.33. So 0 0.33 meters or 330 mm. So if it is 330 mm and we have assumed a depth of 500 mm, so guys, minimum itong 330. So that means, I mean, that means our 500 mm depth is indeed adequate. So pwede to. So kapag hindi, dapat natin palitan. Pero ba't naman ako gagawa ng problem na kailangan pa natin palitan? Siyempre, direct na natin. No? So ito. This is already adequate. So with that, guys, we are already done with the first, I mean, first step. Teka, ayusin ko nga lang yung page setup natin. So I will just be placing it here. Okay. So ayan, um, we are already done with the assumed trial section. So we're already done here. And as for the load analysis and the structural analysis for the required strength, we have already done that previous meetings ago. So yun nga yung nag-simplified method tayo. So it is in that step wherein we have, I mean, we did this. So ginawa na natin itong load analysis and itong required strength. So it, I mean, we are already done here once again. So the next step is for us to input the material properties, FY and FC. And once again, in our problem, they are already given. So FC prime, 28 megapascal, and FY is to be 420 megapascal. So okay na tayo on that part. So we already have our section property which is to be 300 mm by 500 mm pero wala pa tayong bakal. So we do not yet have um, steel rebars or mean steel reinforcement. So with that guys, yun yung isolve natin ngayon. So once again, we are already done with steps 1, 2, 3, and 4. And actually, in your board exams, in most cases than not, you are only uh, determining the required number of rebars. So sa mga board exams nyo, ito talaga yung ginagawa. Given lahat yan, in most cases, then once again, you will be determining the number of rebars. Okay, but before anything else, i-draw muna natin yung section natin. So for our section once again, our section would be 300 by 500 mm. So draw, draw natin siya sa right. So eto, 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 and eto. Okay, so with this guys, so meron tayong AS sa baba. So let's say that this, these are to be your rebars. And um, let us draw its um, shear reinforcement. So of course, dapat may reinforcement yan na shear. So this is to be a requirement for all beams because all beams are subject to shear. So for a moment, drawing muna tayo sandali. 
So, kunwari maganda yung drawing ko. Okay, so for example, that this is to be our setup. And that our um, base W or BW, that is to be 300 mm. And the total height or the, to the total depth, I'm sorry. So, the total depth of our beam is to be 500 mm. So, ayan. And for our effective depth, D. So, by the way, this 500 mm right here is to be your total depth H. And for your effective depth D, saan ba natin pwedeng isulat? Guys, nakikita pa ba pag dito ko sa baba sinusulat yung D? Teka. So, guys, eto. Nakikita pa ba dito sa part na to? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Yes, sir. So, so once again, we will be solving for D. And the value for your D is from the topmost fiber of your compression um, site up until the centroid of your array bars. So, kapag ano pala, guys? So, kapag double layer to. So, for example, that you still have your rebars here. Oops, sorry. So, let's say that you still have your rebars here and rebars here. You would be getting the, um, what do you call this? You would be getting the centroid of all of this. So, Chandni, questions? Chandni? Ay, kala ko. Do you have questions? Chandni? None? Sir, wala po na pindot lang. Okay. Okay. So, anyway, so, ganun guys, if you would be having two layers, ano siya? Um, kukunin nyo yung centroid. So, gamit kayo ng Varignon's theorem from your statics of rigid bodies and etc. But since our setup, so in my design, I want it to be um, one layer only. So, gusto ko one layer para mas madali. Even in actuality, guys, I try to design my structure in one layer as much as possible. So, ayun. Okay. So, ayun for our depth D. So, this is now to be your depth D. So, D is to be equal to, so 500 mm, 500 mm, minus, so itong part na to, naitanggal na natin yan, and we will, we will also subtract the um, thickness of the reinforcing, I mean, the, the uh, shear reinforcement. So, check ko nga lang kung nagre-record. Okay, nagre-record. Okay, so anyway, so we would be subtracting 10 mm. So, itong 10 mm na to, given to, no? So this, I mean, that is to be the blue part here. So ito, so that is to be the blue part. Minus, so we would, ay teka, hindi pa pala natin na iaalis yung, ano, yung concrete cover. So meron pala tayong concrete cover, guys. So for our concrete cover, this is to be equal to 40 mm. So if we would be checking this, so sabi interior beam nga kasi yung beam natin, and for your interior beams, it would be this ones. So ito. Regardless of the uh, bar diameter, as long as it is to be an interior beam and it is not exposed to weather or in contact with ground, we would be using 40 mm specified cover or concrete cover. So with that, guys, we would be subtracting 40 mm here. So minus 40 mm. Teka. So minus 40 mm. Teka, urong natin at kulang yung space and I need space. So ito. So naalis na natin tong concrete cover, then naalis na din natin yung um yung DV or yung um, diameter ng shear reinforcement. And once again, our depth D is to be from the top post compression fiber up until the centroid of your steel. So with that guys, we would now be subtracting half of this diameter of the rebar. And since it is not included here, of course it will be up to you kung anong gagamitin yung diameter. And Maybe let's try 20 mm, I think. So let's try 20 mm. So use 20 mm for our first trial. So I would now be subtracting half of 20 mm. So that is to be 20 over 2. And our answer here for our total depth D. So I mean our effective depth D, I should say. This is now to be equal to 500 minus 10 minus 40 minus 20 divided by 2. And that is now to be equal to 440 mm. So, voila. So, we already have our effective depth D. So, our effective depth D once again is 440 millimeters. Okay. So, moving forward. So, ano ba yung next na gagawin natin? So, we are already done with our section. So, this is to be our section. So, now we would now be designing. So, design natin isa dito. So let's start from the left going to the right. So from the left, so we would be starting once again from here and we will be making use of this MU which is 216.27. So um wait by the way, so MU 
is to be equal to 216 point. What was that again? 27. Kilonewton meter. Okay. And um, using our basic principle of USD, MU should be great. I mean, should be less than or equal to VMN. And with that, guys, we will be assuming that MU is equal to VMN. Pero ngayon, draw, draw muna natin yung section natin. So once again, this is to be our section. So rectangular. However, guys, if you can remember here that for this section, for this portion of our um, of our beam, the rebars or the tension rebars should be at the top because of its manner of bending. So guys, malino naman kung bakit nasa taas yung rebar natin dito, no? Mr. Runes, understood? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. How about for the others? Or Rajin, understood? Yes, po, sir. Okay, so with that, guys, um, our rebars should be at the top. So yung rebars natin nandun sa tuktok, guys. So nandito. So let's say, kunwari, basta yan. Lagi na lang natin, ito yung total niya. So let's say that this is to be AS. Okay, and if that is to be the case, if your AS would be at the top, it means that your effective depth D would be measured from the bottom. So, ganito siya. So, basically, guys, binaliktad mo lang to. So, this is just uh, rotated by uh, 180 degrees. So, naiikot lang siya, no, guys? So, if you want to design it in this way, better. But if you want to design it in this manner, kasi dyan kayo sanay, okay din lang. You would be arriving at the same answer. But for the sake of you um, better visualizing the problem, it is better if if I would be drawing it um, in the right manner. Kasi nga, nasa taas yung rebars natin. So, there. And once again, our effective depth D is to be equal to 440 mm. So, we have already solved for this earlier. And what else? So, our base, I mean, the width of the base, this is to be equal to 300 mm. So, given na naman to sa problem. Okay, so for us to determine the, um, what do you call this? So for us to determine the um, AS or the required steel area, we will be using any of these following methods. So meron tayong tatlong methods na sinabi ko. And actually guys, it is not limited to these three steps. So ito lang yung tatlong pinaka-basic na steps, pero madami pang steps actually. So ayun, isolve natin siya gamit itong tatlo. But before that, guys, check muna natin yung raw minimum pati yung raw maximum. No? So raw minimum and raw maximum. So for your raw minimum, that may either be um, 1.4 divided by Fy or square root of F prime C divided by 4 Fy. Okay, so ngayon, solve natin. So for your raw minimum, so for your raw minimum, it may either be 1.4 divided by Fy, and our Fy is to be 420 megapascals. Or, rho minimum is to be equal to square root of Fc prime, and our Fc prime is to be 28, divided by 4, times Fy, and our Fy is 420. Okay, so with that, check natin. So looking at the calculator to your left, this is to be equal to 1.4 divided by 420. So, 0 0.0033. So, 0 0.0033. And as for our raw minimum using this equation, this is now to be equal to square root of F prime C, and that is to be square root of 28 divided by 4 times 420, and our answer here is to be 0 0.00315. So, ayun. So guys, para hindi kayo malito kung anong gagamitin, gamitin nyo na lang yung dalawa. So, your raw minimum should be uh, greater than both of this. Pero kapag ginamit mo naman to, so for example lang ginamit mo 0.0032, I mean, ito yung naging raw mo, it is to be adequate here, but it is not adequate here. So hindi pwede to. So with that guys, so with that logic taken into consideration, it is better if you would be choosing this. So 0 0.0033. Three. So why is that the case? Because if it is already adequate here, so if it is already adequate here, it is automatically adequate here because any number that is greater than 0 0.0033 is also greater than 0 
So, malinaw yun. Mr. Abdon, clear? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Okay, so moving forward, so that is to be our row minimum already. So, what about for our row max? So, for our row max. So, according to NSCP, guys, so you, you have already learned about this last prelims. So, for your row maximum for NSCP 2015, row max is equal to 0 0.85 FC prime FY times betas of 1 times 3 over 7. So, this is for your NSCP. But your row max, if you want your section to be um, tension controlled, so, pag naninigurado kang tension controlled yung section mo and wala siya sa um, transition zone, your row maximum is to be 0 0.85 F prime C over F Y times beta of 1 times 3 8. So, ayan guys, no? So, kung titignan nyo dito, ang pinagkaiba lang nila is that for your NSCP 2015, this is to be 3 over 7. And for, N I mean, for tension control, this is to be 3 over 8. So, what that means is that if you would be making use of this row max, automatic naman siya na, ang tawag dito na magiging govern, I mean, magiging governing sa NSCP 2015. So, since you are to be the designers, it will be up to you if you would be using this or this. However, but, I mean, however, if you would be using row max of NSCP 2015, which is 3 over 7, there is a probability or a possibility that your section is to be transition controlled. And kapag transition controlled, magre-ratio in proportion ka na naman sa value ng fee. Sabi yung value ng fee. So, ito. So, magre-ratio in proportion ka na naman kapag nandito sa section na to yung uh, beam mo. Pero kapag ang gamitin mo is yung mayroong 3.8, yung... Um, tawag dito pang tension controlled, automatic nandito siya. And if it is there, automatic din na yung fee mo is to be equal to 0 0.9. And once again, it will be up to you as engineers, whichever you will choose. But in my case, sa mga dinidesign ko, I use tension controlled. Para sure naman na fee. Para mas madali. And para mas madaling i-backtrack and mas madaling i-check ng adequacy. Okay. So with that, guys, I will be making use of the row max for tension controlled. So guys, okay lang tayo doon. So sa tension controlled na lang gamitin natin and hindi sa NSCP. Pero automatic naman pag ginamit natin yung row max ng tension controlled, automatic na pwede siya sa NSCP. So ayun, within the limit siya. So guys, okay lang no? Yung row max na gamitin natin, tension controlled. Mr. Yaban, okay lang? Mr. Yaban, are you there? Wala. Okay. Yan, okay, sige. So, ayan, so we will be making use of row max for tension controlled and that is once again to be equal to so 0 0.85 times F prime C and our F prime C is to be 28 once again divided by Fy. This to be 420 times betas of 1 and since our F prime C is to be equal to 28, automatic na yung betas of 1 natin is to be 0 0.85. Then we will just be multiplying this by 3 eighths. So, 3 over 8. Okay, so moving forward. So, row max. This is now to be equal to um, tag dito, 0 0.85 times 28 divided by 420 times 0 0.85 times 3 over 8. So, ayan guys. Ang row maximum natin is to be 0 0.01806. Yan. So, unitless pala ang row natin. No? So, ito yung magiging row max natin. However, guys... I think it is better if we would be comparing it. I mean, if we would be comparing our answer later to the um, AS minimum and AS maximum. At hindi na tayo sa row magbase. So with that, guys, let us just multiply this by a BWD. So for our AS max. So AS max. That is to be, multiply lang natin to ng BWD and that is to be 300 mm. By... 440 mm. So guys, no, for your um, AS, so AS is to be equal to rho BWD. So ito, memorize nyan. So ayan, and minultiply ko lang siya ng BW pati D para mapalabas natin yung AS maximum. So with that guys, this is now to be equal to, so times 300 by 440. And that is now to be equal to 238, I'm sorry, 2384.25 millimeter squared. So this is to be the maximum AS. So AS maximum yan na siya. And for our AS minimum, teka ba't ko in-erase? Teka, pabalikin natin. Okay. 
So for our AS maximum, I mean AS minimum, teka, urong ko lang to pababa. So for our AS minimum, just multiply your raw minimum by BWD. And that is to be equal to 0.003333. Actually, ito times 300 by 440 mm. So with that, the AS minimum. So yung minimum still area natin is to be 0 0.0033333 3333 times 300 times 440. And that is to be 439... Actually, 440. So, 440 millimeter squared. So, ayan. Basta ito yung dalawang governing, governing natin. AS minimum and AS maximum. So, nanggaling yan sa raw max pati sa raw min. So, guys, malinaw to? Guys? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. So, dito tayo babase kung adequate ba yung i-design natin. Okay. So, once again, we would now be um, solving for the required steel area. And nasan ba yung required steel area natin? So, ito. Meron tayong steps na to. Teka, copy-paste ko na lang sa, ano, sa next slide. Okay. So, we have three ways once again. And let's say that we will be trying the first one first. So, try muna natin tong una. And yung unang yan, gamitin natin ngayon sa, ano, sa leftmost, which is yung 216.27. So, gamitin natin siya dito. So, it is said that there, here, I should say, that we will be solving for A. Pero kalimutan mo na itong by summation of forces horizontal. So, we would be solving for A by any means possible. So, yung pinakamaganda dyan is that we will be um, equating our MU. So, we will be um, equating our MU to phi mn. So, ito lang yung gagamitin natin. Teka, gilid ko muna itong AS min pati AS max na yan. So, dito ka muna. Tago ka muna dyan. Okay, so once again, um, MU is to be equal to VMN. So our MU is to be 216.27 kN. So 216.27 kN meters, I should say. And this is to be equal to, so what is to be VMN? So the first step is for us to assume that V is to be equal to 0.9. So assume natin tension controlled siya. Then, i-check na lang natin mamaya kung tama yung assumption natin. So, with that, guys, this is now to be equal to 0 0.9 times. So, what is to be the value of mn? So, pwedeng ano yan? Pwedeng 0 0.85 fc prime ab times uh, d minus a over 2 or as fs times d minus a over 2. But it is better if we would be making use of this first kasi nga, hindi natin alam yung as and hindi natin alam yung a. And kapag dito sa equation na ito na una, we, I mean, we don't know the value of A. So, we only have one unknown. Okay, so gamitin na lang natin yan. So, copy ko na lang ito pala. So, ito na yung gagamitin natin dito. So, this is to be for your value of itang kalat. sa pa. Urong ko yan dito. Then, baba natin to. Okay. So, once again, guys, this is to be your fee. So, MU is equal to phi times MN. So, ito, sinabsitute ko lang. So, guys, are you still following? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. How about for the others? Miss Verceles, are you still following? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Okay, so proceeding. So, substituting known values. Oh, by the way, guys, if you would be multiplying this, your answer is to be in terms of Newton millimeter. So, for us to um, to arrive at this answer, we would now be multiplying this by times 10 raised to negative 6. So, conversion factor lang to. So, ayan. So, with that, guys, let us now substitute, I mean, substitute known values. So, this is to be 216.27 kilonewton meter. And this is now equal to, so, 0 0.9 times 0 0.85 times f prime c and that is to be 28 times a so our a is to be unknown so times a times b and our b is to be equal to 300 mm times d and our total depth once again is 440 minus a over 2 so a 
over 2. Oops, times 10 raised to negative 6 nga pala. Teka, urong ulit natin to. So, um, times 10 raised to negative 6. So now I will be um, simplifying this equation. So this is now to be equal to 216.27 is equal to, so I will be simplifying this. So 0 0.9 times 0 0.85 times 0 0.28 times 300 and this is to be equal to um teka tama ba 0 0.9 times 0 ah 0.28 tuloy so 0 0.9 times 0 0.85 times 28 times 300 this is to be equal to 6426 i should say so 6426 a times 440 minus a over 2 so, A over 2. So, I would now be uh, using FOIL method. Eh, FOIL method, ano lang pala, distribute ko lang to dito sa dalawa. So, th with that guys, this is now to be equal to 216.27 642 Eh, sorry. Mumultiply ko na pala. 6426 times 440. So, times 440. This is now to be equal to 2827440 to Pero nakalimutan ulit natin yung times 10 raised to negative 6 dito. So anyway, yan. Um, a. So a, a dito. Then minus. So I will be multiplying this here. So 6, 4, 2, 6 divided by 2. So ito guys, basic algebra. no So this is now to be equal to 2, 1, 4, 2. So 2, 1, 4, 2. Ay, divided by 3. But, sorry, sorry. Divided by 2 pala dapat to. So, nanggaling yung 3. So, sa paso, 6, 4, 2, 6 divided by 3. Ay, divided by 2, I should say. So, 6, 4, 2, 6 divided by 2. This is to be 3, 2, 1, 3. So, 3, 2, 1, 3 times A squared. Kasi may A dito times A. That is to be A squared already. And don't forget this, so this is to be our conversion factor, times 10 raised to negative 6. Then, copyin ko lang to, continue natin sa next na slide. So, ayan. So, let's now continue. So, guys, okay lang? Nakasunod kung paano natin sinimplify ito? Guys? Mr. Runes, okay? O Mr. Abdon? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. How about for the others? Ms. Balignasay? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, so proceeding here, so we would now be solving for A. And if, since, as you can see, this is to be a quadratic equation. Teka, simplify pa pala natin. Distribute natin tong times 10 raised to negative 6. So our new equation would now be equal to 216.20. Teka, mausi. Baka mausi kayo. So 216.27 is equal to, so let's multiply this by 10 raised to negative 6. So, 2827440 times 10 raised to negative 6. So this is to be equal to 2.827A minus, so 3213 divided, I mean, 3213 times 10 raised to negative 6. So with that, guys, our answer here is to be 3.2. 213 times 10 raised to negative 3 a squared so a squared so we have plenty of ways on um solving for a quadratic equation i mean of a quadratic equation oh nga naman so ayun we would be making use of well quadratic equation so pwedeng negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a so pwede natin gamitin yan and since we already have our calculators let us use our calculators to our advantage. So, gamitin na, na, na lang natin yung calculator natin, no? But let us um, arrange this in such a way na magiging ganito yung format niya. So, ax squared plus bx plus c. So, arrange natin ng ganitong form, no? Para magamit natin yung calculator natin na maayos. And if you would be using quadratic equation, edi, mas madali nyo ulit siyang magamit if you would be um, arranging it in this manner. So, arranging that, I mean, arranging it in that manner. So, transpose natin to. So, that is now to be equal to 
2, 1, 3 times 10 raised to negative 3. Then if you would be transposing this, oh by the way, A pa pala. So A, then transpose natin ito din. So this is now to be equal to negative 2.827 times A. Then plus 216.27 is equal to 0. So with that guys, this is to be your A, this is to be your B, and this is to be your C. So quadratic equation, or I mean quadratic formula, or calculator. And since meron naman na tayong calculator, it is better if you would be using our calculators. So looking at the calculator to your left, we can either do shift solve or mode 5.3. I think mode 5.3 ba yun? So mode 5. Yes, mode 5.3. However guys, if you would be making use of shift solve, so if you can remember guys that if you would be having a quadratic equation, so ito may a squared then may a, you would, I mean you should have two answers. So the first answer and the second answer. So meron tayong a1 pati a2. And hindi ka pa sigurado kung alin dyan yung mas tama. So if we would be um, making use of mode 5 and 2. So eh, mode 5, 3 I should say. If you are using Casio something. Ano ba to? Casio 570 ata to. So anyway. So mode 5, 3. And ayun. Ilagay nyo lang dito yung mga values ng a, b, and c. So in this case this is to be 3.213 times 10 raised to negative 3. Then for B, this is to be negative 2.827. Oops, sorry. 827. Then for C, this is to be positive 216.27. So enter natin. So our A1, or the first answer here, is to be 795.218 mm. And for our A2, so equal sign ulit natin, this is to be 84. 0.6445 So damihan natin. Ganyan. Okay. So these are two possible answers. So ang piliin nyo dito is yung mas makatotohanan. So if you would be looking at our section, if our depth D is to be 440 mm and our A should be our compression, um, what you call this? So yung compression area lang natin. So this is to be A. So if our D is to be 440 and our solved value for our A is to be 795 and 2. I mean 795 and 84. So hindi na realistic itong A1. So disregard that already. So we will be using 84.64457. Okay, so that is one way on I mean for us to solve for the value of A with the help of our calculator. Pero pag wala ulit ulitin ko lang pag wala kayong tiwala sa calculator nyo mag quadratic formula na kayo. Okay, so anyway, so another way on how you would be solving for this is via shift solve. Sige, so 3.213 times 10 raised to negative 3 times alpha x, so times x squared, oops, sorry, times x squared minus 2.827a, so alpha x, time, I mean plus 216.27 so alpha equals 0 shift solve enter so first times a charm so ano no sa unang na solve niya 84.6447 i mean 4457 agad so chumamba tayo na unang try niya yan agad yung nakuhang sagot which is yung governing one but what if um yung lumabas diyan na answer is yung mali so paano mo mapapalabas yung tama so with that guys, um, shift solve mo ulit. So shift then solve. Then um, let's say uh, input a number that is let's say relatively high. Na yung medyo malayo sa 84.64. So let's say type natin 1000. So 1000. Enter. So ngayon hahanapin ng calculator nyo kung ano yung pinakamalapit na answer na malapit sa 1000. And in that case, that is to be 795 7.95.218. 4898. So guys, understood? Oh, na lang. So tama yes, yan. Yan. Very good. Okay, so ayan, you can use any of those two and in our quizzes, guys, you can use yes, mode 52 or shift solve as long as you would be showing me your quad quadratic equation. So ayan. So with that, guys, our governing value of A is to be 84.64457 mm, I should say. mm to guys. So, ayun. So, I will be copying this to our next slide. 
para hindi ko na isulat ulit or baka makalimutan ko kasi so eto so there so 8RA is to be equal to 84.64457 and copy ulit natin ito para hindi ko ulit makalimutan so let's copy this okay So with this guys, we can now solve for the value of our AS. So if you can remember our AS, so for us to solve for AS, we can uh, use MU is equal to uh, phi MN or summation for is horizontal. So dapat same lang sila ng answer. However, check pala muna natin guys kung ano, kung tama yung tawag dito, kung tama yung assumption natin ng phi which is 0.9. So check pala muna natin yun para bago tayo mag-proceed. So, since you already know the value of your A, check nyo naman ngayon yung value ng C. So, C is to be equal to A divided by betas of 1. And once again, our betas of 1 in this case is to be 0.85. So, with that, 84.64457 divided by 0.85 and our answer for C is to be... Teka... Ayaw. So, 84.64457 divided by 0.85. Teka, 64457 ba? Anyway, sige. So, 64457 divided by 0.85. And our answer here is to be ba tayo mag-equal sign? 99.582. So, 99.582 mm. And ngayon, check natin yung FS. So, kung natatanda nyo guys, if your FS is to be greater than or equal to 1,000, it is now tension controlled. And it, if it is tension controlled, it is automatically equal to 0.9. So, ayun. So, ito pala guys yung ano no, yung tawag dito, yung correction natin from our last meeting that if you would be comparing your FS, I mean, if you would be solving for your FS, that should be, I mean, you would, you should be using Uh, this equation. So, Fs is to be equal to 600 times D minus C over C. So, ito dapat yung gamitin yung equation, hindi yung in terms of rho. So, ito dapat. So, ayan. So, with that guys, our Fs, teka, shift store ko na lang to guys, no, sa C. So, itong answer na nasa calculator ngayon, yan yung nasa C. I mean, yan yung value natin ng C. So, I would be storing it to C. So, nasa C na siya ngayon. Okay, so with that, so our Fs is to be equal to 600 times D minus C and our D is to be 440 minus C divided by C. So with that guys, so looking at the calculator once again, so 600 times um, 400 minus alpha C. Kasi stinore ko na yung C ko dyan, divided by C. This is to be equal to 1810. So, 1810 point Paulet, Paulet Teka, teka May, may mali ba ako? 1.40 point? Ay, 440 Teka, 440 pala to Sorry, sorry O, oh, tama Very good, very good So, ayan pala So, 440 ito So, very good sa mga nakapansin, no? So, guys Parehas na ba tayo ng sagot? Guys Pacheck nga if we are, I mean, if we have same answers. Yes, sir. Okay, very yes, good. Sir. So, 2051.09. So, very good, no? So, thank you. So, ayan. And it, as you can see, this is a lot greater than 1,000. So, if it is to be a lot greater than 1,000, it means that this is tension controlled. And tama yung assumption nating 0.9, yung value natin ng fee. So, with that, i-dissolve na natin ngayon yung AS required. So, that is to be, so, teka. So, MU is equal to phi MN ulit. So, MU is equal to phi MN. And our MU once again is to be 216.27. Copy ko na lang. Medyo makakalimutin ako eh. So, ito. So, 216.27 kilonewton meter. And this is to be equal to phi. So, tama ngang 0.9 talaga. So, 0.9 times mn 
and our MN. So, kapag nasa transition zone siya, pwede yung ASFY gamitin natin. Oops, sorry. Ano nangyari? So, ASFY. So, AS times FY. So, ASFY times D minus A over 2. So, we have already derived this before. So, substituting known values, but di pa natin sinubstitute dito. So, our FY is to be 420. So, 420, then our D is to be equal to 440, minus A over 2. And ang A natin is, ano nakalimutan ko naman na. So, ano na yung A natin? 84.64457. Ayan. Okay, so, teka. So, ito. A, ito yung A natin, divided by 2. Pero don't forget guys yung conversion factor natin. Kasi yung answer niyan, kapag i-multiply mo lang ito. So kapag i-multiply mo lang ito guys, naka newton millimeter yan. Ito naka kilo newton meter. It is either you will be converting this into newton meter or converting this into kilo newton meter. So parehas ang dapat yung lalabas sa sagot. So times 10 raised to negative 6. So with that, so ito solve natin yung AS. no So AS is now equal to so, kayo bahala kung shift solve or um, i-divide na lang natin to sa lahat ng terms dito maliban sa AS. So, ganun na lang gawin natin. Pero dapat kapag mag-shift solve kayo, exact same dapat answer. So, 216.27 divided by 0.9 times 420 times 440 minus 84.64457 divided by 2. Teka, check ko lang kung tama. So, Ayan, 216.27.9420.440.84.6457 divided by 2. Oop, nakalimutan natin yung times 10. So, times 10 raised to negative 6. So, our governing answer here is to be 1438.709879 mm squared. So, ito yung AS required natin. Ngayon, compare natin siya if it is to be uh, greater than yung AS minimum and it is less than AS maximum. So, copy ko lang ito sandali. So, na yun? So, ito yung AS minimum natin. And as you can see, our AS required is uh, greater than your AS minimum. So, pwede siya. So, pwede na to. And it is also less than. So, mas malaki yung AS maximum. So with that, we would be making use of our AS required. However, if let's say that uh, mas maliit yung AS required mo sa AS minimum, you would be making use of 440 mm squared. So ito na yung gagamitin mo if ever mas maliit yung na-compute mo. But if let's say that your AS required is greater than your AS maximum, it means that um, it is not tension uh, controlled anymore. So, maaring nasa transition siya. But if you would be um, checking the code by NSCP, so by NSCP, sabi niya doon, yung 3 over 7, asa na yung kanina? So, eto. Kapag eto yung ginamit nyong raw max or AS maximum yung nanggaling dito, then mas malaki pa rin answer mo, hindi mo na pwedeng gamitin to. With that, guys, you should design your beams um, in terms of doubly reinforced already. So, ayun no guys, no, dapat doubly reinforced na yung section natin pag lumagpas siya ng Romax. Pero since okay naman siya, so we will push through. Asa na yun? So, we will push through with this. Ay, with RAS required, I should say. So, ngayon, alamin natin kung ilang reverse yung kailangan. So, for that, but may epal na naman dong parenthesis. Okay, anyway. So, for the number of 20 mm rebars, you would just be um, dividing this by uh, the area of one rebar. So, 1438.709879 divided by pi over 4 times 20 squared. So, ito guys, ano to? I mean, ito, area ng isang rebar. So, this is to be um, millimeter squared per piece. And this is to be millimeter squared. So, millimeter squared would cancel out, leaving you um, an answer in pieces. So, N, 20 mm. And this is to be equal to, so, 148. So, 
or yung answer na lang pala kasi naka-store siya dito para mas accurate. So, answer divided by pi divided by 4 times 20 squared. So, our answer here is to be 4.57, oh, I mean, 4.58 pieces. However, you cannot buy 0.58 pieces of a 20 mm rebar na in terms of its cross-sectional area. So, if ito yung rebar mo, hindi mo naman pwedeng bilhin kalahati lang, no? Imbis na putulin mo yan throughout. So, no. So, what we will be doing here is that we will be rounding up. So, with that, guys, our N20 mm, this is now to be equal to 5 pieces. So, we will be making use of 5 pieces of um, rebars. So, in that case, guys, if we are to draw its section, so, ito, black na lang. So, let's say that this is to be its section already. And since they are to be at the top, so, mayroon tayo dito lima. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, ayan. Then, we also have our, um, what you call th this? So, mayroon pa tayong shear reinforcement dito. And, ayun. So, mayroon din tayo dito sa part na ito. So, ayan. So, meron pa tayong shear reinforcement dyan and meron pa tayong hook actually dito. So, anyway. So, we will now be checking if this is alright according to this spacing. So, sabi pala dito guys, no? We will be checking for the spacing limits. If the spacing is to be greater than 4 thirds MSA or if it is greater than DB or if it is greater than 25 mm. So, dapat lahat yan masatisfy natin. By the way guys, correction. Greater than or equal to... Greater than or equal to ito mga ito. So, ayan. Greater than or equal to lahat yan kasi ito yung mga minimum actually, guys. So, minimum. Okay. So, now let us solve for the spacing, no? So, for the spacing, so, check natin yung spacing nito mga to. So, let's say that this is to be your SC. So, ito. Pantay-pantay yan, guys, ha? And let's say that that is to be SC. So, for us to solve for SC, so, actually, we have already derived this in the uh, video lecture. Pero sige, i- Ano natin to? I-solve pa rin natin dito. So, with that guys, this is to be 4, I mean 300 mm. Kasi 300 mm nga yung base niya. So, 300 mm. And we will be subtracting the concrete cover. So, minus 2 times the concrete cover and that is to be 2 times 40. And then, um, we would also subtract the, um, the reinforcing steel bars for your shear. So, shear minus 2 times 10. So, ito yung steel, I mean, shear rebars. Then, i-minus natin tong lima. So, limang, tawag dito, limang uh, rebars na yan. So, minus 5 times. So, 20 mm to. Wait lang, 20 mm ba gamit natin? O, oh, 20 mm. So, minus 5 times 20. So, that would leave us an answer of the total of the SC. And we would now be dividing it by the number of spaces. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. And basic, basically, that is to be equal to 5 minus 1. Kung medyo nalito kayo, panoorin yung pre-recorded video lecture ulit. And with that, guys, our answer here is now to become, so, 300 minus 2 times 40 minus 2 times 10 minus 5 times 20. And we will be dividing this by 4. So, oh my God. So, sakto palang 25 mm, no? So, 25 mm. So, yung mga provisions natin that your SC, tagal, taas ko lang ulit dito para mas makita nyo. Oops, sorry. So, according to NSCP, I mean, according to the code, it should be greater than or equal to 25 mm. It should also be greater than or equal to um, four-thirds of the maximum size aggregates. So, eto guys, nakadepende to kung anong gravel yung gagamitin nyo sa concrete nyo. And, Let's assume that our MSA is to be 18 mm. So 18 mm yung madalas dyan. And yun, it should, I mean, this should also be greater than the bar diameter. And our bar diameter is to be 20 mm. So mas malaki siya sa 20 mm. So with such guys, etong etong setup na to adequate siya. So gamitin niya na natin. I mean, gamitin na natin yan. Sorry, nabulunan na naman. Okay, and since um, we are running out of time, we will be continuing with the other two. So, eto meron pa tayong dalawa actually ditong um, way. So, eto naisolve na natin to gamit ito. And as for these two, let's 
solve for our next problems using these two. So, meron pa actually tayo dito, no? So, we still have this and we still have this. So, ang na-design pa lang natin, guys, is to be at the left corner, which is um 5 diameter, 20 rebars. Okay, so if you are wondering pala, guys, ang sabi ko dito sa part na to, ang spacing limit daw natin is 4 thirds MSA, DB, and 25 mm according to NCP 2015. But if you would be opening your NSCP 2015 and yung mga printing ng NSCP na yan is yung first printing, ang nakalabas dyan, guys, is asa na yun? 50 mm daw. So, ang sabi dito sa so 425.2.1 for non-parallel pre-stress reinforcement in a horizontal layer, clear spacing shall be at least the greatest of these three. So, ito yung mga pinagsusulat ko dito. So, ito yung mga to. Pero, ang sabi dito, guys, 50 mm. So guys, this is a typographical error because if you would be referring to ACI, so this is to be ACI 318-14M, so ito yung pinagkuha na ng NSCP, so dito siya ng opya, 25mm ang sabi dito. But if you bought an NSCP that is to be in second printing, kapag bumili kayo sa Shopee, sa mismong ASEP, no? pag bumili kayo sa ASEP ng um, NSCP, 25mm dapat to. So, this should be 25 mm. So, once again, this is to be a typographical error on the part of the printing. Okay, so, ayun. So, once again, guys, since this is adequate in all aspects, so, pasok siya sa raw minimum, pasok siya sa raw maximum, pasok siya sa flexural strength, and pasok siya sa spacing, once again, you will be making use of this setup. Ang, ang dumi naman. Teka. So, gagamitin natin itong setup na ito doon sa leftmost part ng ating beams. Okay. So, since we ran out of time already, so, if there are no more questions, I mean, if there are questions, you can ask me later. You can um, leave me a message. And, ayun. So, you are actually dismissed already since you already, I mean, since you have class the next hour. Okay. So, thank you for participating. So, for your attendance, I will be relying to the automated meet by I mean, the automated uh, attendance by Google Meet. So, ayun pala guys. So, once again, that is it for today. So, thank you.